Hello and welcome to Behind the Pipes, a mini-series where we take you behind the scenes of the pipe organ here at First United Methodist Church in Florence, Alabama. I'm your host, Sam Flynn. In today's episode, we will be going literally behind the pipes to see what happens in the organ chambers, how things work, and some of the issues that we're having there. So let's go take a look. I'm here in the organ chambers. Uh, this is probably the coolest part, my favorite part of the pipe organ. And it's where you get to see all the different pipes and everything that are here. Now, something uh, to know about a lot of pipe organs is that you have kind of two sections within the chamber, or for bigger organs, three or four sections. Um, the, the bigger section we typically call the great section. And then you have a smaller section that's called the swell section or the swell division. Um, I'm standing in the swell room that's right here and if you'll notice that uh, there's a door right here that this closes and it's typically closed when nobody is up here. Um, and what happens is we have a whole set of pipes which is actually the second keyboard that you see on the organ um, all belong to the pipes in this room. Um, and that allows uh, us to control the volume a little bit which we'll demonstrate in, in just a minute. Uh, but you'll notice here all the different pipes, um, some of them are very large, uh, as tall as 16 feet or just a little bit taller, and then you have some that are teeny teeny tiny as well, um, that, are, that are smaller than the size of my pinky. Um, and this is a, a, a great place to see all the different types of pipes there are and everything. Um, and so now we're going to go into the swell room a little more and explore um, what some of the actual issues are um, within the chambers here. All right, so I'm here in the swell room now, and as, uh, as I mentioned before, there's all the pipes. Uh, you can see some of the smaller ones that are right there um, that all belong to the swell division. Uh, now, the, the feature here that I'm going to talk about are these shades. Now, these shades, they, um, they allow us to control the volume a little more than simply selecting a stop. Uh, the only way that you can turn an organ up or down is by selecting a stop or by having pipes enclosed in a room like this. So if you see, um, if we have the shades open, uh, they, they open like this and it allows a lot more sound to go out. And then if you see them close, You can see th that um, that it encloses it and it encloses the sound a lot more. Now, one of the issues to note here is that as you open it, the top half of the shades here are opening at a different speed than the bottom half. And then the same thing as you close them, the same thing happens. Now, a lot of that has to do with um, this little mechanism here and then the other part that's uh, directly below me. Um, and that's called the swell machine. Now the swell machine is not operating properly. Now it works, as you can see the shades are still moving, uh, but it, it doesn't operate as it's supposed to. And so one of the things that the Milner Organ Company needs to do is take the swell machine completely out and take it back to their shop and do repairs on it um, so that the machine will operate exactly as it's supposed to. Um, and then once that happens, then as we open and close the shades, then um, they'll open and close all together. Um, and the other nice thing also is that this machine also, um, when the organ is turned off, it automatically opens the shades. Um, uh, it, any organist knows that you should always leave the, the swell shades open, or the box open as we call it, um, as, um, as it allows the organ to stay in tune with, with the part that's out there. Uh, so that's, that's the swell room, and that's the explanation of what's going on with the swell machine. The last part of our tour in the organ chambers here is um, I, I wanted to share a little bit about the work that was done over the summer on the organ. Um, so there's already been some repairs that have been done. Um, and the, the Milner Organ Company from Eagle View, Tennessee, um, came and they removed approximately 35 or 40 of the pipes. Um, and some of them you can see are leaning a little bit as well. So like uh, these, some of these here are leaning some. Um, but there were several pipes in here that were leaning over completely. Um, they had fallen onto other pipes. And uh, luckily we found it what appeared to be fairly quickly, which is good. 
Um, but when those pipes fall over onto other pipes, um, it, it can create a hazard. Um, it also doesn't allow the organ to operate properly. And so what the Milner Organ Company did is they took these pipes back to their shop and they essentially sanded them down or shaved them down and then they put, uh, I don't know for sure if it was duct tape or another type of tape uh, around the bottom so that the, the cone shape at the bottom of a pipe um, would be able to sit back in the wind chest um, which is how the, the pipes are able to stand straight up. Um, now a lot of the pipes are, will have that happen to them simply because of the, the age of the instrument and the quality of the metal that was made to use um, used to make these, these pipes. Uh, so this is something that uh, we've had issues with that we fixed but uh, the, the, surely there's going to be more uh, of these issues that will arise at some point. Uh, and so it's good that we're aware of those things that are going on inside the chamber here as well. Um, the, the last thing that they also fixed for us is our, our chime pipes, which are right here. Um, if you were in service that day, you'll remember that uh, the organ was randomly chiming. Before the service, I walked in and just heard, heard the chimes go off and um, came up, tried to figure out what was going on. Um, and so they were able to identify the issues with the chimes and, 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 and fix that. And we found out that that was more had to do with the, the, the electronic component down in the console than it did up here. Um, but again, uh, lots of different issues have been presenting themselves. We're trying to keep on top of them so we can use the, the instrument uh, to its fullest capacity uh, each week. That's all we have time for on today's episode of Behind the Pipes. I hope you'll join us next time as we talk a little bit more about the work that's already been done to the organ recently and future plans and future repairs that will need to be done on the organ as well. If you've enjoyed learning about the organ and would like to contribute to the organ fund as we look to repair the 1982 rudder pipe organ, uh, you can do so by visiting fumcflow.org slash giving or by calling the church offices. Mm -hmm.